Usually, Adrian was pretty tired after a photo shoot, but knowing he was going to Mariners after it had given him a burst of energy, and it had apparently shown in the photos. These are wonderful, Adrian, Vincent exclaimed as he showed him the photos on the small camera screen. They were at the Jardin des Plantes, shooting new promotional material for Adrian the fragrance, amongst the flowers as they started to bloom for spring. Why he even had a perfume was beyond him, but he had to do as his father said. It was the only reason he was being allowed to go with Marinette and her family to London, although his father had yet to make his decision on the Shanghai trip. I'm sure your father will be happy, he said, and Adrian just smiled, hoping that was the case. When they were done, Adrian walked with Natalie and his bodyguard back to the car, and the blonde smiled the whole drive over to the bakery. He found out at the start of the week that he was being allowed to go to London, and he'd practically run into school to find Marinette and tell her. And thankfully, she had just been as excited as he was. They were leaving tomorrow morning, on Saturday, and returning on Tuesday. It wasn't the longest time in the world, but neither teenager cared as long as they got to spend time with each other. The car pulled up outside the bakery and Adrian grabbed his school bag and practically bounced out of the car and towards the side door of the Dupin Cheng house. He hadn't actually been to school today, he'd had back to back photo shoots scheduled, but he brought his Mandarin textbook and other materials in his usual bag. The blonde knocked on the door and Sabine opened it with a bright smile. Adrian! She hugged him, then stepped to the side so he could come inside. Are you all set for tomorrow? Yes, my Aunt Emily is fine with me to stay with her, and my cousin Felix will be meeting us at the train station. He smiled at Sabine, but his expression was a little tight. Adrian loved his family, but seeing his Aunt Emily always made him feel sad. She looked too much like his mum. Thankfully, Sabine didn't notice his strained smile. Oh, good. You know, I always get lost on the underground. It'll be good to have him help us. Marinette's upstairs. Adrian nodded and started his ascent, deciding not to tell Sabine that Felix probably wouldn't be that helpful. Well, Adrian supposed, Felix could act quite nice, so he could probably put on a front for the Du Chengs, but Adrian wasn't so sure how things would go with his cousin. Lao Sha Hao. Adrian looked up, and on the landing for the kitchen and the living room stood Marinette, smiling at him, and his heartbeat sped up a little at the sight of her. Since their lessons had started, she had become so much more confident around him, and he did think Nino's advice had played a part in it. Adrian was patient with Marinette, waiting for her when she stumbled and stuttered, slowly encouraging her to speak up when she was with him. He knew she had no problem when she was with anyone else, but she was just nervous around him because she had feelings for him. Every time Adrian reminded himself of that, he couldn't help but smile. She actually liked him! After months of thinking she hated him, it was a relief to know. But when to do something about their feelings for each other was what he was struggling with. Nino hadn't been much help. Or maybe he had. He just told Adrian he had to wait for the right moment. But how are you supposed to know it was the right moment? What if, right when he was telling Marinette how he felt about her, he made a fool of himself? While he wasn't nervous around her for the most part, he knew he would be when he confessed how he felt. He would be the one with his tongue tied then. You know that, he asked, returning her smile as he walked up the stairs towards her. Marinette nodded. It means hello, teacher, right? My mum told me to say it to you. And you said it perfectly. He reached top of the stairs now, and he pulled her in for a hug. That was another thing that had slowly changed too. She had taken him by surprise when she'd hugged him at the end of their first lesson, and he surprised himself when he spontaneously hugged her when she'd asked him to go to London with her. It had now grown to be a natural thing between them, even if they did get a few snide remarks from Chloe the first few times he did it at school. But Adrian didn't care. Getting to hold Marinette in his arms was always the highlight of his day, although he'd never hug her in front of Tom. Marinette's dad may like him more now, but that would just be asking for trouble. We missed you at school today, Marinette said when they both pulled out of the hug. Oh, surely you can cope without me for one day, he said with a wink, and she blushed. Uh, yeah. I mean, no. No, wait, yes. Uh, I... Adrian just smiled at her. He wouldn't encourage her to finish that sentence. It would probably make her uncomfortable. Thankfully, Marinette managed to find her voice again. Anyway, I've got all of today's classwork for you, as well as our Easter holiday homework. He groaned. You could have just said you weren't seeing me today, and then I wouldn't have had to have done it. Nice try. We already told everyone we're going to London together. Adrian couldn't help but smile. The two of them had been so excited that they had told their whole class and all their teachers and most of the other students about their trip. By this point, Adrian was sure the rest of the school could see how he felt about Marinette. Well, everyone but her. How could he make it more obvious that he was in love with her? Marinette led the way up to her room, taking a moment to hide her burning face from Adrian. Why had she told him she'd missed him today? It wasn't a lie. She had. Like a lot. Like more than she would ever be willing to admit. But she didn't have to tell him that. What was wrong with her? Well, where Adrian was concerned, 
many things, but why did she blurt embarrassing things like that out? Fortunately, he hadn't seemed to have minded. He was always so patient with her, and lovely, and kind. He'd be such an amazing boyfriend, but Marinette knew he was too good for her. She'd have to settle for him being her amazing friend instead. They went into her bedroom, leaving the hatch open like always, and Adrian spotted Marinette's pink, of course, pink, suitcase open on the chaise. It was half packed by the looks of it, and on the desk, Marinette had already made a start on her Easter homework. He guessed she didn't want to be doing it in London, but they still have some time to do it when they got back. She moved the work to the part of the desk where her sewing machine was, and then grabbed her Mandarin notepad. The two of them sat down, Adrian took out his textbook, and he opened it to the next section. Ready to start? Marinette nodded. She'd been practicing hard, but today was probably her last chance to get everything down so she could impress her aunt. Alright, today's lesson will be on family and talking about family members. Marinette nodded, missing the tension in Adrian's voice as he spoke. Helpful, considering the situation. Exactly, so that's why we'll cover it today. And we can practice more on the train tomorrow? She nodded again. Practicing Mandarin would at least stop her from saying something embarrassing to Adrian in front of her parents. And his bodyguard. And Natalie. As excited as she was to spend some of the Easter break with Adrian in London, it gave her plenty more opportunity to make an idiot out of herself. And knowing her brain, it would take the chance without a second thought. Okay, so the two key words of the lesson are going to be this and that, Adrian continued. You don't usually think about them much in our language, but this usually refers to an object that is close to the person speaking, and that is to an object close to the person listening, or close to neither of them. That is na, and this is je. Je, Marinette repeated with a frown. Yeah, it's a bit of a difficult sound, but I know you can do it. Je, na, say them. She repeated them back, still unsure, but Adrian smiled at her. You got it. Don't doubt yourself so much. He reached over and squeezed her hand. You really are good at this. While Marinette normally would have been happy he was touching her, she still frowned. Do you really think I can impress my aunt with this? Adrian nodded. Of course. You're amazing at Mandarin. A natural. Anyone would think you're Chinese. Okay, I take it back. I didn't miss you at school today. The model laughed, knowing she didn't mean it. If she had, she would have removed her hand from his by now. Don't worry, I know you did. The same way I missed you today. He took his hand back just as her face turned bright pink. He really had missed her. They were with each other for five days a week at school, and texted most weekends. But since he was on a photo shoot, he couldn't really text her, and Marinette wouldn't have been able to reply anyway since she was in class. He got used to being in some form of her presence almost constantly, and today had felt weird being completely apart from her until now. Marinette just stared at Adrian for a moment. He... he had missed her? Her? He had meant her? There was no way. Well, maybe there was. He probably just meant it as a friend. Nothing more. Right? You... did? Marinette asked. Adrian turned back to her. A little surprised Marinette had actually asked that. As much as she had improved where talking to him was concerned, she had never continued a conversation when it was about something like this. Why was she asking now? Because she doubted he was telling the truth? He tried not to frown. He would never lie to her. He hated lying. But maybe it was less about being untrustworthy and more about Marinette not believing she was worth missing? It was a big leap in logic to make, but it did make sense. She hadn't spoken to him for so long because she believed he hated her, even though she knew now it was all just a massive misunderstanding. Perhaps she was struggling to accept Adrian could see her for more. They had gone four months without speaking after all. It's... it doesn't matter, Marinette whispered, then wheeled away from him a little. But Adrian quickly grabbed the edge of her chair. He'd taken too long to answer and had made her feel uncomfortable. That was the last thing he'd ever want to do. I did miss you, he said, and her pretty blue eyes glanced up at him. Sorry, I was just confused about why you asked. Of course I did. But why? Nina had told him to look for the right moment, but Adrian didn't think this was it. Not after having accidentally upset Marinette but perhaps it was the right moment to hint that he wanted something more than just to be her friend. Marinette, you're amazing. While I'm sad that you can't see it in yourself, I'd be more than happy to try to show you every single day. I agreed to teach you Mandarin because I wanted to spend more time with you. And now we're friends, good friends. I can't imagine what my life would be like without you in it. It feels weird not to be around you every day in some way. That's why I'm so excited about London, because I'll get to be with you. There was also some underlying dread where seeing his Aunt Emily was concerned, but Marinette didn't need to know about that right now. He would be spending most of his time in England with the girl he was in love with, and that's what Adrian was trying to focus on. Marinette's blush got worse the more and more Adrian revealed. She had thought he'd maybe said he'd missed her too, as a throwaway joke, not even really thinking about what he said. But because of how she felt about him, 
she had hoped it meant more. And it seemed like it did. Normally she'd tell herself that she was twisting Adrian's words in her head to make herself believe he felt something for her too, but she wasn't doing that this time. For the first time, she felt like he really could have feelings for her. I'm excited to go with you too, she said with a shy smile. Adrian smiled as well. Good. It's going to be amazing. Are we okay to carry on with the lesson? Once Marinette nodded, a pretty pink blush still high on her cheeks, he reluctantly turned back to the textbook. Ch, na, Adrian said, continuing, both of them easily falling back into the lesson. This and that. So I'm going to say, who is that? As if I've just seen one of your family members. I don't know them, and I want you to introduce them to me. I'd say, na, sh, shui. Na means, oh, that, Marinette said, and sh means to be. You got it. Shui means who. Na, sh, shui. Who is that? Na, sh, shui, Marinette said, writing it down as she repeated it. And if you wanted to say, who is this? She looked back down at her notes. Ch, sh, shui? Adrian gave her a huge smile. I told you, you're amazing, Marinette. Marinette blushed again. She guessed Adrian might have only been saying these things because they were friends and not because he had feelings for her. He was lovely like this with everyone. He wasn't giving her any special treatments, but she'd lost count of the amount of times he called her amazing in the last half an hour. She'd never heard him call anyone else that. All right, so who is that, who is this? Now we need to answer the question. So you'd say, this is my dad. Ch, sh, wo, de, baba. Can you break that down for me? Okay, so um, Marinette looked down at her notes. Ch is this, sh is, is, wo is me, so I guess baba is that? Exactly, but what about the de? Marinette just shrugged. She knew Adrian had said she was good at Mandarin, but she wasn't that good. It indicates possession. Wo alone means me or I, whereas wo de means mine, so it goes before the noun, in this case baba. And you can easily replace baba with mama, which means mum, Marinette said with a smile. She could work that one out. Adrian didn't return the smile, just nodded. Good, but I'll be there when you see your aunt, so you'll need to know the word for friend. Pongyo. Marinette giggled as she repeated the word, and Adrian smiled at her. He thought she always looked beautiful, but more so whenever she laughed or smiled. So, when you introduced me to your aunt, what would you say? She looked back at her notes. Chu shu wo de pongyo? Good, now your auntie might ask instead, do you have a friend? In that case, you would probably say, Ni yo pang yo ma. Yo means to have, so literally, you have a friend. Use yo in the same way you use sh. So then I'd say, wo yo de pang yo, I have a friend. Adrian gave her another big smile. Close, but don't use de here, since yo already indicates possession. Let's use ge instead of de. It's a measure word to show amount, but since you're only introducing one friend, you don't need to add a number. Ge on its own just means one, so it's wo yo ge pang yo. Marinette nodded, writing that down too, then flipped back to a page in her notepad. So, if I use yo, like sh, do I negate it with bu? Adrian shook his head. No, but it's a similar concept. Negate yo with me, me yo. It means don't have. Marinette snickered as she wrote it down. Sounds like mayonnaise. I mean, I guess, if that helps you remember it. It does. I haven't got any mayonnaise. <laughs> Adrian couldn't help but laugh. Learning Mandarin with Marinette was definitely ten times more fun than when he did it alone these days. Use it in a sentence for me then. Um, me yo wo ge pongyo. Close, it should be wo me yo ge pongyo. Same structure as a busha sentence. For example, I don't know, wo me yo mama. The two teenagers both froze when they realised what Adrian had said, and Marinette shuffled closer to him without any hesitation. Adrian? He rolled his lips together, trying to hold back tears. There had been no build up to that. Of course, he still got sad about his mum. He had loved her so much. He still did. But he usually felt sad when it was her birthday or when he saw something that reminded him of her. This felt like it had come out of nowhere. I'm fine, he said, but he couldn't meet Marinette's eyes. She laid her hands on his knee. It's okay. You can talk to me if you want to. I have macarons! Marinette looked up and saw her dad, halfway up into the room, brandishing a plate of said biscuits. She watched as her father's eyes immediately narrowed at the sight of her touching Adrian, but then he finally seemed to register the atmosphere in the room. Tom simply placed the macarons on the floor, and then closed the hatch, leaving the two teenagers completely alone. Come on. Marinette took Adrian's hand and led him over to the chaise, and in the different light here, she could see the tears in his emerald eyes. I'm sorry. The lesson reminded you of your mum, didn't it? Adrian shook his head. Not really. I just... I don't know. It came out of nowhere. Marinette shrugged. There doesn't have to be a reason. I just... I miss her. 
I know she's not coming back. I'm not stupid, but I don't know. I think... Adrian sighed and looked away from Marinette. Deep down, he knew why he was sad. It had been hovering in the back of his mind all day, but he'd been trying not to think about it. I've been really excited all week about going to London. And I am. I meant what I said. I can't wait to spend time with you there, but I'll be seeing my auntie too. She looks exactly like my mum. Marinette wrapped an arm around his shoulders. She had no idea. Oh, Adrian. Uh, maybe you can stay with us? He smiled. Thanks, but I doubt my father would let me. And it'll be okay. I love my Aunt Amelie. And Felix, too. And in a way, it'll be like getting to see my mum again. Even though it might be painful. Yeah. And I can be with you when you first see her. If you want me to. Adrian turned to her with a smile. That would really help, actually. Sorry about that. Marinette shook her head. Don't be. I can't imagine what it's like to lose a parent at our age. It's difficult. Okay, I'm fine. I am. Let's have some macarons and go back to studying. Um, no way, not after that. We've done enough for today, and we've worked hard all term. We're going to take the macarons into the living room and play some Mecha Strike 3. Unless you're too chicken. Adrian's mood changed instantly. Are you challenging me to a duel, Du Pen Cheng Xiaojie? I am a Gretchen Xiong, and I'm going to win. They both laughed, then both got up, grabbed the macarons, and went down into the living room where Tom was sat looking nervous on the sofa. Papa? Are you okay? Marinette asked. He stood up and started wringing his apron in his hands. I just wanted to check Adrian was alright. The blonde smiled. I'm okay, I just... I'm seeing my auntie tomorrow for the first time since my mum's funeral. And they really look alike. Tom nodded, understanding. I see. So, we thought we'd take a break, Marinette said. Eat some snacks and play Mecha Strike 3. Do you want to play Papa? It's a two-player game. Marinette shrugged as she and Adrian descended the stairs. That's fine with me. We can swap around, and then I can thrash you both. She sat between Adrian and her dad on the settee as they played, and true to form, she beat them both. But she didn't really care about winning for once. Spending time with the two of them was enough for her. Eventually, her dad left to go back down to the bakery, and Marinette turned to Adrian with a smile. Did you want to stay for dinner? He shook his head. He looked happier than before, but he looked pretty tired now. I think I just want to go home. Maybe see if I can talk to my dad? Although the chance is slim. I guess that's why he's not coming with us tomorrow. My aunt looks too much like my mum. And I need to pack and stuff. Besides, you're probably sick of the sight of me by now. Marinette smiled. I could never be. You will be by the end of Tuesday. And I just said, I could never be. For a change, Adrian was the one who blushed. And when a moment of silence descended between the two of them, he opened his mouth, about to confess how he felt, but he swiftly shut it. With the way he was feeling right now, he wanted to take a bath and go to bed, not tell Marinette that he loved her. The moment was almost right, but not quite. I'll go and get my things, he said, slipping away from her. And Marinette just stared at where he had been sat. Had he been about to say something important then? Or was that just in her head? She groaned and led down on the sofa. Her brain was so addled by her feelings for Adrian that she couldn't tell if he was just being genuinely nice to her or if he felt something more for her. God, she needed a brain transplant. Or therapy. Therapy would be easier. You okay? Marinette looked up and saw Adrian leaning over her. Why are you upside down, she asked. He smiled. I'm not. She quickly sat up, the blush on her face warm from embarrassment. Sorry, I forgot I was lying down. Did you get everything, including the homework? Adrian nodded with a slight eye roll. Unfortunately, yes. And I text Natalie. She'll be here soon. As he finished speaking, a car horn sounded outside. And that'll be her. I dread to think how many traffic laws she just violated. Marinette smiled. Come on, I'll walk you down. They left the room and started walking down the stairs, but instead of going one after the other, they stood next to each other as they went. Are you sure you'll be okay? Marinette asked. Adrian nodded. Yeah, I mean, my aunt will be working, so I'll only see her in the mornings and the evenings. I'll be with you the rest of the time. And when I'm at my aunt's, Felix will be there. And by the way, he looks like me? Marinette's eyes widened. Seriously? Yep, we used to dress up as each other and trick our parents. She groaned. Please do not do that to me. I will not be able to tell you apart. Adrian smiled. I wouldn't dream of it. They made it to the bottom and Marinette opened the side door, and directly opposite were Natalie and the bodyguard sitting in the parked car. Without any hesitation, the two teenagers hugged each other, and Marinette closed her eyes as she leant against Adrian's chest. She never thought she'd get this with him, and now she felt like it was okay to hope that there might eventually be something more between them. But if she thought about it too much, she'd end up completely focusing on it and ruining everything they'd built between them. For now, she just wanted to enjoy what they had. Adrian pulled away from the hug and smiled down at Marinette. Today hadn't been the day to confess his feelings to her, but perhaps on their last day in London, he would. That way, if things went terribly, 
They won't have to see each other for another week. He was done with waiting. He wanted to be able to tell Marinette how he felt. I'll see you tomorrow, Adrian said as he backed away towards the car. At the train station. Don't be late, Marinette shouted to him. Adrian stared at her incredulously. Don't you mean you don't be late? They both laughed and the model got into the car, smiling at Marinette as the car pulled away. He doubted his father would be available to talk to him when he got home, but he was sure it would be okay. Marinette would be there for him if he needed to talk, and he couldn't ask for anyone better. Adrian couldn't help but bounce slightly on his feet out of excitement. His father, of course, hadn't been free to talk, but once she saw how dejected he was, Natalie made him a hot chocolate and they sat together in his room, and he told her how he felt about seeing his aunt again. Thankfully, she understood. Natalie had gone to university with his parents, and she missed his mum too, but she reassured him it would be okay. He wasn't so sure it would be, but after having spoken to someone who had known his mum, he did feel a little better about it, and this morning, he had been able to push the thoughts of his aunt to the back of his mind and concentrated on the fact he was going away with marinettes. He had been excited immediately, and that feeling hadn't dampened through breakfast, as he packed, or on the way to the train station. He only hoped Marinette would arrive on time. How are you feeling this morning? Natalie asked, leaving the bodyguards to stand with their backs. Better, Adrian said. I just hope Aunt Emily doesn't hate me if I'm a little awkward around her. I'm sure she'd understand. Adrian! At the sound of Marinette's voice, he turned around with a huge smile. She was walking towards him, looking just as excited as he was feeling, and she was holding a small box with the bakery's logo on it. Her parents were walking behind her, Tom pulling two suitcases. Adrian went to hug her, but thought better of it, considering Tom's presence. Marinette's dad might like him more now, but he didn't like Adrian that much yet. I can't believe you're on time, he said with a grin. She gave him a small glare. I might be late most of the time, but my mum never is. You don't get to have a macaron now, and I made passion fruit ones especially for you. He kept smiling. How did you know they were my favourite? Oh, well, um, Nino mentioned it, she whispered, then opened the box. The box was full of peach colour macaron shells, and he could smell the passion fruit flavoured ganache between the biscuits. He could also see these macarons weren't the perfect circular ones sold in the bakery. They all varied in size and shape. It was obvious Marinette had made them for him. He stepped closer to her, his voice dropping down a little. Did you make these? She nodded, blushing, and Adrian took one from the box and popped it in his mouth. They were nowhere near as good as the ones her parents had made, but knowing Marinette had spent hours making them, and he knew they did take hours, made them taste even better. They're amazing, Marinette, just like you. Her blush got even worse. Thank you. I think it's time to find the platform, Tom said, his jaw tight, and Adrian took a step away from Marinette, realising he probably said a little too much in front of her dad. The six of them went into the train station, and once they'd found the departures lounge for the Star Train and gone through security, they boarded the train. Natalie had all the tickets on her tablet, and she pointed out which seats were theirs. These four around the table, and then the two across the aisle. Sabine smiled at Adrian and Marinette. Why don't you take the two together? Is that a good idea, Tom asked, forcing out a smile. The train was fairly quiet, with people mostly boarding alone. They were the biggest group, and the only ones talking. Marinette's dad couldn't make a scene here. You'll be able to see us the whole time, Papa, Marinette said, and Tom nodded then, giving his permission. And once all of their bags had been stored, the two teenagers sat together, with Adrian taking the window seat and Marinette the aisle. Just when I thought he was starting to like you, Marinette said with a sigh. Adrian shrugged. We'll get there. I just... Yesterday you were feeling so down. I don't want my dad making you feel even worse. How are you feeling, by the way? A little better. My dad, as I thought, was busy, but Natalie sat with me. We talked about my mum for a bit. It was nice. My father doesn't usually like talking about her. Marinette nodded. I understand. The train set off then, but Adrian kept his attention on Marinette's. Now that they were under the harsh lights of the train's carriage interior, he saw how tired she looked. Are you okay, though? You don't look like you got much sleep. Oh, do I look bad? No, Adrian said, quickly backtracking. You don't look bad. You just look tired. I didn't mean it as a bad thing. I was just concerned. You still look pretty. You always do. He rolled his lips together to force himself to stop talking. He had never told Marinette he thought she looked pretty before. Or anyone, for that matter. He could only hope Tom hadn't heard him. Thank you. I was at plates, making the macarons. The meringue takes a while to make, and then you have to rest them for at least an hour before you bake them, and then I had to be up early this morning to fill them. You know, you didn't have to do all of that for me. I know, but you seem so sad, so I wanted to cheer you up. Adrian smiled. Seeing you is enough to make me happy. Marinette blushed and gripped the macaron box she was holding. Guess I can keep these then, 
Um, no, you made them for me, so I'll eat them all. She giggled and handed the box over to him. Go crazy. I'll be going to go over some Mandarin then. Adrian shook his head. I think you need a nap more. I'll be fine. I know you get grumpy when you're sleepy. It's over two hours to London. Go to sleep and I'll wake you up when we enter England. Are you sure? She asked. He nodded and took his earphones out of his pocket. I'll be as quiet as possible. With a smile, Marinette leant back in her seat and closed her eyes. And after Adrian had eaten two of the macarons and set up the next episode of his favourite television show on his phone, she was sound asleep. She looked just as pretty when she was asleep. It was moments like this when Adrian found it hard to believe someone as amazing as Marinette actually had feelings for him. She was so wonderful. Someone cleared their throats and Adrian looked up, then immediately blushed in embarrassment when he saw Tom and Sabine were both staring at him. Marinette's mum was smiling, but her dad was frowning, and Adrian quickly turned back to his phone. Now was not the time to be admiring his crush. Eventually, he felt Tom's glare leave him, and Adrian glanced over at Marinette every few minutes to check she was okay. She looked very relaxed, and soft snores were escaping her mouth. She really had needed the sleep. He turned back to his phone, clicking on the next episode of Marvelous, Tales of Majestia and Night Owl, but just as he did, he felt Marinette's head thump on his shoulder, and she woke up with a start. Oh, sorry, she said, rubbing her eyes, then yawned. It's okay. How close are we to London? Her voice was a little rough from sleeping, but Adrian smiled at how cute it sounded. About half an hour? She yawned again, her eyes drooping close. He could see why she was always so late to school. Marinette definitely wasn't good at waking up. He took out one of his earbuds and handed it to her. Want to watch this with me? It might wake you up a bit. She took the earbud and put it in, then leant her head back on Adrian's shoulder. Marinette knew she wouldn't normally do this, but she also wouldn't normally go to London with Adrian Agrest. And she was sleepy. She was never fully aware of everything she did when she just woke up. It was a wonder she'd only ever turned up to school once dressed in her pyjamas. As soon as Marinette's head made contact with his shoulder, this time consciously, Adrian's first instinct was to freeze up. He knew Marinette liked him, but he didn't think she'd do that, particularly when her dad was around. Either way, he wasn't going to shrug her off. He liked the feeling of her resting against him, their arms pressed together. If he turned his palm, he could hold her hand. He wanted to, but he knew that would be taking it too far. And he definitely wasn't brave enough to tell Marinette how he felt about her when her dad was less than a metre away. They stayed sat like that, watching together, even as Marinette started to wake up more. Part of her knew she should pull away, now fully realising what she was doing, but a bigger part of her wanted to stay like this. She knew she and Adrian wouldn't get much time alone together on this trip. The train started to slow down as they pulled into St Pancras Station, and Marinette reluctantly lifted her head away from Adrian's shoulder and took out the earbud. Thanks, she said. He smiled. Feeling more awake? Yeah, and I like the show. I've never seen it before. Adrian's smile got wider, and Marinette could feel her heartbeat speed up slightly. I really like it. Maybe we could watch some more together one day? I'd like that. They smiled at each other, but Adrian's face dropped when he saw Tom stood in the aisle. We're here, the baker said, his voice a little tense. Sabine appeared beside him with a smile. You'll need to lead the way, Adrian. We don't know what your cousin looks like. Oh, he's easy to spot. We look the same. Tom looked like he died inside slightly. There's two of you. How wonderful. The six of them got off the train, and once they made it onto the platform, Adrian led the way over to where Felix was waiting. His identical cousin was standing outside a bakery on the station, leaning against the glass shop front. He was in his usual smart attire, with his hair slicked back, but the similarity between the two boys was obvious. Felix, Adrian called with a smile, and his cousin just tilted his head in recognition. Once close enough, the two boys hugged, and the Dupen Chengs hung back, all three of them astonished by how alike they both looked. Marinette knew Adrian had said they looked the same, but she hadn't expected him to be right. She didn't think he'd lie to her, she just didn't think he meant actually identical. She had just assumed he'd meant they shared a lot of facial features. She wasn't expecting a pair of twins. Adrian turned to her with a smile. Marinette, Sabine, Tom, this is my cousin Felix. Felix offered a small smile, and even though he looked like Adrian, the smile didn't look natural on his face somehow. Nice to meet you, he replied, thankfully in French rather than English. Marinette's English was much worse than her Mandarin. The family of three all smiled back. You both look the same, Marinette said. I'm going to have to label you. Felix scowled. I take great offence to that. Have you seen what he's wearing? Hey, Adrian said, shoving his cousin lightly in the ribs with his elbow, and Marinette just giggled. Okay, here are everyone's tickets, Natalie said, handing each of them an orange and cream coloured train ticket. Felix, you still have yours? He absentmindedly waved his oyster card at her. 
From what you've told me, Adrian's friends will be taking the Victoria line all the way down to Vauxhall, and we'll be taking the Circle line to Liverpool Street. Is that okay with everyone? Actually, Marinette said, looking over at her parents. I was wondering if I could go with Adrian. He wanted me to meet his auntie. Tom looked back and forth between his daughter and the boy he knew had a crush on her, and then nodded. Adrian was slowly growing on him, and out of all the boys she'd been to school with, he was probably the most sensible for her to have as a boyfriend. And Tom did feel bad for him. Seeing his auntie again, who looked so similar to his mum, would be hard. Of course Marinette would want to be there for him. Plus Natalie and Adrian's bodyguard would be there too, so he knew she would be safe. You can, but you come straight to Vauxhall when you're done. Marinette smiled. Thank you, Papa. Do you have your aunt's address, Sabine asked? Yes. Natalie has it just in case. Marinette folded her arms. Do you not trust me? Of course not, sweetie. Make sure you're back for dinner, yeah? Marinette nodded and Felix led the way into the underground. It was much busier than St Pancras had been since they'd arrived at around lunchtime. Groups of tourists were passing through, as were plenty of Londoners, easily carving their way through the crowds. It was getting pretty loud too, but it was really warm in the tunnels. Marinette found herself stepping closer to Adrian. She knew he wasn't an expert on the underground either, but if she was going to get lost, she liked to get lost with him. Felix led the way easily, and once they made it through the ticket barriers, he took them down to the Victoria Line, and then onto the southbound platform. The next train will take you straight through to Vauxhall, Felix told them. You don't need to change, just get off there. Tom and Sabine both smiled at him. Thank you for your help. We'll see you later, Marinette. She waved at them, and then Felix led them away from the Victoria Line, and his face dropped. Thank God, I don't have to pretend to be nice anymore. Don't worry, you are doing an awful job, Adrian said, and Marinette just laughed. The two cousins, for how similar they looked, were the complete opposites. The five of them found their way to the tunnels for the circle line, and as they made their way onto the correct platform, the underground train came into the station. The speed of it made Marinette's pigtails fly backwards, the hot air now blowing onto their faces. And as soon as the train stopped and the doors opened, they followed Felix onto the nearest carriage. Thankfully, the air inside the carriage was much cooler, and the five of them sat down on the yellow patterned fabric seats. Natalie on the bodyguard on one side of the carriage, Marinette, Adrian and Felix on the other. The train wasn't as busy as the station had been either, but even though there were plenty of people in the carriage, it was quiet. Why is no one talking? Adrian whispered to his cousin as the doors beeped closed and the train set off. It's a crime to talk on the underground, he answered, voice becoming even more deadpan to Marinette's surprise. The two boys really weren't alike at all. Then why are you? Because my cousin is an idiot. Adrian glared at Felix. And this is why I don't spend more time with you. Oh, so I am the reason you didn't come to my dad's funeral. Marinette watched as Adrian's face fell. She thought the boys had just been bantering. She didn't know that about Felix's dad. Thankfully, Felix noticed right away. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I didn't. Adrian began, tears starting to gather in his eyes. It was so soon after my mum. I couldn't. Felix nodded. I understand. Before Adrian could say anything more, Marinette took hold of his hand and squeezed, and he squeezed it back, and then didn't let go. They sat like that for the rest of the ride to Liverpool Street Station, in a slightly awkward silence, but with Adrian and Marinette still holding hands. Both teenagers knew that Natalie could see them, but neither of them cared. Marinette knew Adrian needed comforting right now. When the train pulled into Liverpool Street, they all stood up, Adrian reluctantly letting go of Marinette's hand. He could really use a hug from her right now. Liverpool Street Underground Station was quieter than St Pancras had been, and once they had passed through the ticket barriers, Felix led the way above ground. He walked in front with Natalie and the bodyguard, idly talking about how Felix was doing at college since he'd finished high school early, but Marinette and Adrian hung back a little as they followed them. It's nice here, Marinette said, looking up at the buildings. Liverpool Street was where a lot of the banks and lawyers' offices were in London, and the area was filled with modern glass skyscrapers, along with older brick buildings too, accompanied by men and women wandering around in suits, presumably all coming back from their business lunches. She wanted to appreciate it more, but it was hard when she knew Adrian was upset. He just hummed, and she took his hand again. It's going to be okay, she told him, but Felix is right. I couldn't even go to his dad's funeral. That's awful. He says he understands, and it is understandable, Adrian. Up until last year, you were homeschooled. You were probably with your mum every day. She taught you, right? Adrian nodded. For the last year before I came to DuPont, Natalie did, because my mum got ill. But, yeah, my mum was my teacher. Exactly. You probably spent more time with your mum than I ever have with mine. It's no wonder you miss her like crazy. And I'm assuming Felix's dad's funeral wasn't long after hers. For a 13-year-old to go through that much grief, you wouldn't have been okay. Particularly not if you had to see your auntie again so soon. I'm sure Felix did want you there, but I'm also sure he understands. 
Adrian squeezed Marinette's hand as he blinked away his tears. He really didn't want to cry in the middle of London. Why couldn't I have known you when my mum was dying? Marinette threw caution to the wind and hugged Adrian in the street. She couldn't imagine what it must have been like during the last year of Emily's life, for any other family members, but especially not Adrian. She knew he wouldn't have been able to handle watching her mum slowly die. She didn't know how Adrian had survived it. It's going to be okay, she whispered, hoping he heard. Most people were keeping to themselves, giving them a wide berth, but buses and taxis were chugging along on the road, generating a lot of noise. Adrian did hear her, and buried his face into Marinette's hair, holding her tight around the waist. He knew he would be, and for the most part, he had healed a lot where his mum was concerned, but the prospect of seeing his auntie was really getting to him. He was glad that Marinette was here with him for it, though. He held her for a minute or two until he was sure he wasn't going to burst into tears, and when he let go, he looked around for Felix. He was stood with Natalie and his bodyguard at the entrance to an apartment building, and Adrian realised they had arrived at Felix's. I can call your dad, Natalie said, stepping towards Adrian and Marinette's. We can get you a hotel. You don't have to do this. No, I... I think I need to. Natalie nodded and Adrian took Marinette's hand and led her into the building, and they all stood in silence in the lift as they went up to the penthouse. It was a little awkward, but Adrian didn't mind. He needed to see his aunts. It might hurt, but he had to do it. The doors dinged open on the 20th floor, and Felix led the way down a short hall, decorated with mirrors and lilies and crystal vases, each sitting on small polished wooden cabinets. Adrian had been here before, but it had been a long time ago. Felix took a key out of his pocket, but just as he finished unlocking the door, it was flung open by Amelie. Natalie, she exclaimed, hugging the other woman. How have you been? I'm good, thank you. Amelie saw Adrian over his ward's shoulder, and she pulled away from Natalie and slowly walked over to him. Hello, Adrian, she said, being a lot less enthusiastic. She didn't want to overwhelm him. Hi, he managed to get out. He wished he had his school bag or something, so he could have squeezed the strap for some kind of comfort. So instead, he squeezed Marinette's hand. He didn't realise he was still holding it, but right now, all of his thoughts were focused on Amelie. He knew she wasn't his mum, but she was so similar. Oh, Adrian, Amelie said, then hugged her nephew. And as soon as he felt her arms around him, Adrian burst into tears. He had thought his first instinct upon seeing his aunt again would be to run, but now he was actually seeing her. He wanted nothing more than to be close to her. He started crying even harder when he realised Amelie wore the same perfume as his mum. His aunt held him until he stopped crying, and when he pulled away, he saw that she had tears in her eyes too. I missed you, Adrian said. She smiled. Me too. Who's this? Oh, Adrian wiped his eyes and smiled when he saw that Marinette had stayed stood beside him the whole time. She really was wonderful. This is Marinette. It's nice to meet you, Miss Graham de Vanilli. Amelie laughed. Please, just call me Amelie. I spoke to Gabriel before you arrived. He said you love fashion. Is that right? Marinette nodded with a big smile. Then let me give you a tour of my closet. I've got some beautiful pieces, but I don't know how to style them. You need to help me. Oh, sure. Wonderful. Amelie grabbed Marinette's hand and pulled her into the apartment, and Natalie and Felix both turned to Adrian. Are you okay? His father's assistant asked. Adrian nodded with a sniff. Yeah, I needed to do it. I think so too. I'll unpack your things in the spare room. Why don't you spend some time with Felix until then? Adrian nodded and he followed Felix into the apartment. Plenty of light shone down the hallway of the penthouse from the floor to ceiling windows in the living room, only blocked slightly by the white grand piano, but Felix led them off into the second door on the right side of the hallway. Felix's room was much plainer than Adrian's. A double bed was in the middle of the room with large windows opposite. A desk with a computer and games console on it was positioned in front of the windows, and on one side of the bed was a bookcase, and on the other was a wardrobe, and then a chest of drawers. It was fairly plain, with the only personal effects in the room being the books on the shelves and a few trinkets on the desk, along with a single poster for a zombie video game series Felix liked. The colour scheme wasn't much better, everything just black, white and grey, with a splash of blue here and there. It suited his cousin well. Adrian went straight for the bed, a little emotionally exhausted now, and lay down on it, and Felix sat down next to him. I'm sorry for what I said on the underground, his cousin said. I didn't think you'd take it so seriously. I knew you couldn't be there. Aunt Emily's funeral had only just been a month before, and our mums look the same, Adrian finished for him. Felix nodded. I didn't realise it would be so hard for you. Seeing you with my mum before was sad. I'm glad Uncle Gabriel doesn't look like my dad. Adrian laughed. Or if it acted like my dad. At least you have Marinette. The model blushed. I guess. Is she your girlfriend? Adrian shook his head and Felix raised his eyebrows. You are holding hands. A lot. Adrian sighed and sat up. 
I know, I've had a crush on her since I started school, but we only recently started talking. She's amazing. And I know she likes me too, I'm just waiting for the right moment to tell her. Felix hummed. If you wait for the right moment, you'll be waiting forever. So, you need to make the right moment. The other blonde nodded. His cousin did have a point there. What if she rejects me though? You literally just said she likes you too. Why would she reject you, you moron? God, I never knew being in love would turn your brain into complete mush. Rude. I've been teaching her Mandarin, it's not mush. Yet, Felix muttered. Soon the only thing you'll be teaching her is to flirt in Mandarin. I can barely do that in French, let alone Mandarin. I've been really enjoying teaching her though. It's the only time we get to spend alone together, really. Adrian smiled as he thought back to all of the lessons, even the one last night where he got upset. Teaching Marinette Mandarin was something he always looked forward to. Felix frowned. God, that smile is disgusting. Put it away. Um, Felix? Both Adrian and Felix looked up and saw a boy their age stood in the doorway of Felix's bedroom, brown floppy hair hiding one of his eyes, black jeans ripped at one knee, and his dirty shoelaces trailing on the laminate floor, and he kept looking back and forth between the two boys in confusion. Andrew, Felix said, immediately standing up, and Adrian tried not to make a noise in surprise when Felix smiled. Properly smiled. He only ever smiled properly for his mum. Sorry, I came by to get that textbook, Andrew said, stepping further into the room. You weren't answering your phone, but the door was... open. I'm sorry, I didn't know you had a twin. Adrian laughed and stood up, offering his hand to Andrew. We're not. Cousins. I'm Adrian. Andrew shook his hand. Nice to meet you. He's the French version of me, Felix said. Should I expect to see the German version soon? No, but the Italian one's currently in the bathroom, Felix replied. And then he and Andrew started laughing. Adrian had never seen his cousin act like this with anyone. Was Andrew his best friend? Maybe. He knew where Felix lived and had his phone number. But Andrew seemed very unlike Felix. His cousin was meticulous and organised. And Andrew seemed anything but... Did you have that book? Andrew asked. Oh, right, yeah. Felix went over to the desk, a slight spring in his step. The last time Adrian had seen his cousin be so energetic was the last time they'd pretended to be each other. Felix returned with a chemistry book and handed it to Andrew. Here you go. I've added some notes to the parts you struggle with, so read those more in depth and I'll meet you at the library on Wednesday. Thanks. And maybe after we study together, we could go for a coffee? The tiniest hint of a blush appeared on Felix's cheeks and Adrian's eyes went wide. There was no way. I'd love to, Felix said, his voice gone all soft. If Adrian hadn't seen this with his own eyes, he would never have believed it. Great, Andrew said with a smile. I'll see you on Wednesday. Felix gave him a little wave, and when Andrew left, he turned back to the bed. Adrian was still stood there, arms now folded across his chest, a smirk plastered on his face. Boyfriend? He's just a friend, Felix defended, his blush getting worse. Oh yeah, if Andrew is your friend, then Marinette is my best friend. What was that book for? We went to high school together. But you're in college now, Adrian said. Yes, but he's not. He didn't finish early. And he has GCSEs next year. Which I already passed, so I said I'd help him study. What are GCSEs again? Big ass exams you do at the end of high school in the UK. Adrian nodded. So eloquently put as always. There was a knock on the bedroom door and the two boys saw Marinette and Emily now standing in the doorway. And Adrian couldn't help but smile. Adrian, Marinette is amazing, his aunt said. Your father really needs to hire her as soon as she finishes school. I'm working on it, he replied, then smiled even wider when he saw Marinette blush a little. He knew the end of high school was a way off, but if she ended up working for his father, Adrian will get to see Marinette a lot. Felix, have you offered everyone a drink? Emily asked, and when her son shook his head, she put her hands on her hips. Do it, please. She left and Felix sighed. Marinette, would you like something to drink? He asked, clearly not wanting to. Oh, um, what are my options? Yes or no, he said with a glare. Adrian laughed. Don't mind him, Marinette. His boyfriend left without giving him a goodbye kiss. He's not my boyfriend, Felix said, then turned and left the room. I'd like a drink too, please, Adrian shouted after his cousin. And then he and Marinette started laughing. He has a boyfriend, she asked. No, but they're going on a date on Wednesday. I have never seen Felix act like that. It was so strange. Did you have fun with my aunt? Marinette nodded with a big smile. She has some beautiful clothes. I wish I was taller so I could wear them. But how are you feeling now? Adrian shook. Okay, I guess. I didn't think I'd cry. I guess I just really miss my mum. That's normal. Emily says she really misses her sister too. She says she's glad you're here. I'm just sorry I couldn't do more to help you. Hey, don't say that, Adrian said, stepping closer to Marinette and taking her hand in his. You did plenty. I really couldn't have faced my aunt without you. It was no problem, she said, her voice going a little quiet. But she kept smiling at him. 
Was now the moment? Marinette, I- I've got the drinks- oh. Marinette and Adrian both looked over at the door and saw Felix now stood there, holding a tray laden with a teapot, three cups and some chocolate snacks. I can go, Felix said. No, it's okay, Adrian said, taking a step away from Marinette and letting go of her hand. The moment had gone. Felix nodded and put the tray on the desk. I can get some extra chairs and we can play some video games for a bit if you both want. They both nodded and sat together in front of Felix's desk for a couple of hours, hunting zombies together, drinking tea and eating what Felix called Jaffa cakes. Just after five o'clock, Emily came into the room. Marinette, would you like to stay for dinner? Oh no, thank you, she said as she paused the game and put her controller down. I guess I should be getting back. I told my mum I'd be there for dinner and I should probably say hi to my own auntie too. Well, the boys can walk you to the station. Felix sighed and put his controller down. I guess. You'll have to change onto the Victoria line at St Pancras. At the mention of changing lines, Adrian got anxious. From what Sabine had said, none of them were too familiar with the underground. And Marinette was clumsy at the best of times. What if she got lost or hurt? Can we not go back with her? Adrian asked. I'll be fine, Marinette said. There's only one change. Amelie hummed. We can have our driver take her if that'll make you feel better, Adrian. He smiled. It would. Nasley has the address. His aunt nodded and left, and Marinette turned to Adrian. The underground is fine. But you'll be on your own. I don't want anything to happen to you. For once, my cousin is right, Felix said. It's safer to be driven. All right then. Although I will be expecting being driven to school from now on in Paris. Adrian laughed. While you are welcome to get a lift with me anytime, you only live across the road from Dupont. And you only live around the corner? Where's the argument here? They both smiled and Felix made a gagging noise. Okay, you can stop flirting now. You're going to make me sick. Adrian and Marinette both blushed, but before either of them could say anything more, Emily came back. Okay, the car's waiting downstairs. I'll take you down, Marinette. Marinette nodded and she and Adrian both stood up and they both went to hug each other. He held her tight and she giggled against his chest. I'll be safe in the car, she said, speech muffled against him. And I'll see you in the morning for breakfast in Chinatown, yeah? Yeah, Adrian said. It'll only be a few hours, really. And he was feeling much better now he knew Marinette would be getting home safely. He pulled away from her. Text me when you get to your aunt's. I will. Bye, Adrian. Bye. With one last smile, Marinette left the room with Emily, and when they heard the front door of the apartment close, Felix went to stand beside his cousin. In the UK, we call what happened before cock blocking, he said. Wait, you mean you were stood outside listening to us the whole time? Yep, and that was not the moment to tell someone how you feel. You were talking about being sad. Adrian folded his arms. And because you're such an expert at confessing to people, aren't you? Well, yeah, I'm probably going to tell Andrew how I feel on Wednesday. So you do like him? That's not what you should be taking away from this conversation, Felix said with an eye roll. It's a wonder she likes you when your hearing is the selective. Adrian rolled his eyes too. Then how am I supposed to tell her? Like you said, waiting could take ages. And also, like I said, you can create the right moment. Might be a bit hard with her parents around. Then lose them, Felix said with a shrug. Come on, we're ordering a takeaway for dinner. Mum needs to know what you want. He left the room and Adrian dawdled after him. He wanted to tell Marinette how he felt so badly, but how was he supposed to create the right moment when he was useless at romance? Is she always this jumpy? Shu Yin asked, giving Marinette a disapproving stare, but the teenager paid it no mind as she continued to pace. Marinette had thought her auntie would be at least somewhat happy to see her, but when she had arrived last night after Amelie's driver had dropped her off, her aunt Shu Yin had been indifferent, to say the least. Now, they were waiting at the busy entrance to Leicester Square Underground Station for Adrian and his bodyguard to arrive on the train. Thankfully, it was a Sunday, so the crowds were mainly made up of other tourists, not in a particular hurry to get somewhere, but it was also making spotting Adrian difficult, and she was worried about him too. Her aunt had guided them on the underground this morning, but from what Adrian had said previously, neither he nor his bodyguard seemed that competent using the train network here, and Felix wouldn't be with them this morning. She had texted Adrian the whole drive back yesterday evening to assure him she was safe, and then let him know when she got to her aunt's and then proceeded to text each other for the rest of the day. And then this morning, the way their relationship had changed since he had begun giving her Mandarin lessons was amazing. But several times now, it felt like Adrian had tried to tell her something more, like yesterday before Felix interrupted. Her heart was hoping he was about to tell her that he had feelings for her, but she knew it couldn't be true. Or was it? Even to her, there are a lot of signs pointing to that being the case. The only real reason she had for not thinking he liked her back was her denial that Adrian Agrest, of all people, could ever be in love with someone like her. Marinette, her mum called, and the teenager faced her. Sabine jerked her head at the next wave of passengers coming up on the escalators from inside the underground station, and Marinette finally saw Adrian. 
She called his name, and a smile instantly lit up his face. He hurried over to her, weaving through the crowds of people, and met her in a hug. I got worried, she said, her words a little muffled against his body. She would have kept texting Adrian when he was on the train, but there was no signal so far beneath the ground. Adrian laughed. I was with my bodyguard. Doesn't mean you couldn't have got lost. The two teenagers let go of each other. Adrian's bodyguard now stood behind him, and the model peered around, checking to see if Marinette's dad had seen him hug his daughter. But thankfully, the sheer volume of people coming from inside the station was masking them. Introduce me to your aunt, he asked, and Marinette nodded, heading through the crowd to where her parents were waiting. Adrian and his bodyguard stood close to her, not wanting to lose her, and they eventually came across Tom, Sabine, and another woman leaning against the wall of a theatre that was next to the underground station. Aunt Shirian looked a lot like Sabine, but in the same way that Felix looked like Adrian, they were also different. From the harsh ponytail she wore her hair in, to the resting frown on her face, it was clear that even though she was Sabine's sister, she wasn't all that similar to her. Aunt Shirian, this is my friend Adrian. Despite her frown, he gave her his best smile. The frown momentarily disappeared off her harsh face and she hummed in approval. Come on, let's find somewhere to eat. Xu Yin led the way across the road, Tom and Sabine walking with her, and Marinette leant over to Adrian as they followed. What did you say to her? Just nice to meet you. Not sure if she liked it. <laughs> Marinette giggled. She did. Any break from her resting face means she's happy. The walk from the underground station to the Chinatown gate wasn't far, and the two teenagers smiled as they entered the area. The decorations in the shop windows were so bright and vibrant here compared to what they've seen in London so far, and the smell of food was incredible too. They kept going, following Xu Yun into a bakery. The front of the building was brown with gold lettering, not all that dissimilar to Tom and Sabine's bakery back in Paris, except instead of traditional French pastries and desserts, this shop had glass cases filled with Chinese pastries instead. Baked buns filled with pineapple or red bean paste, or coconut or taro. Egg custard tarts from Hong Kong, sesame balls and melon cakes. There was loads to try. Xu Yin sat them down at a table opposite the pastry cases so they could all see. Get what you want, she said. Tom's paying. The baker sighed and took his wallet out ready. Of course. Um, can I have an egg tart and a coconut bun, please, Papa? Marina asked. He nodded. Adrian? Please may I have a red bean paste bun and a pineapple bun? They kind of look like shoe buns. You like shoe buns, Tom asked? My favourite, Adrian said with a smile. And the ones you make are my favourite too. Correct answer, Tom replied. And Shu Yin rolled her eyes. Your shoe buns are... Adequate, she said. Be nice, Sabine said through gritted teeth. She, Shu Yin and the bodyguard told Tom what they would like. And once he went up to the counter to order, Marinette's aunt focused on Adrian. I didn't know any of Marinette's friends can speak Mandarin. He felt Marinette tense up beside him, which wasn't surprising from the obnoxious tone her aunt had spoken with, but Adrian just kept smiling. I can. My father owns lots of shops in China. One of his flagship stores is in Shanghai. Xu Yin looked a little confused. And your father is... Gabriel Agrest. Her eyebrows rose slightly. She clearly hadn't been expecting that answer. Actually, Adrian said, continuing, I've been teaching Marinette how to speak a little Mandarin. She looked at him, a little nervous, but he gave her a reassuring nod. He knew they hadn't ended up practicing on the train yesterday morning, but he knew Marinette could do this. Stealing her nerves, Marinette faced her aunt. Ni hao, wo xing du penjing, wo ming zu Marinette, wo ye shi shui xiong, wo shi ba li ren, na shi wo de baba, chi shi wo de mama, chi shi wo de peng yo. She finished with a smile, and Adrian beamed at her, as did her mum, and even her aunts looked impressed for five seconds. Impressive, Shu Yin said. You did a good job at teaching her, Adrian. You definitely did, Sabine said, a slight smirk on her face, and the model cocked his head to one side. Why was she looking at him like that? So, did you learn any more Mandarin, Tom? Shu Yin said, turning to where the baker was waiting for the drinks and pastries at the counter. The older man flushed. Ah, I, well, no, I'm sorry. She tutted and turned back around. You will be. Tom rolled his eyes. Adrian, do you want to help me carry things over, he asked. Sure. He went over to the counter, where a tray was now full of plates, holding the pastries he'd asked for, and were just waiting on the drinks. How are you this morning, Tom asked. When Marinette got back last night, she said you'd had a bit of a wobble. Adrian smiled. After what had happened on Friday night, it was no surprise that Marinette's dad had asked him how he was feeling now. I'm fine now. It's great to see my aunt again. I'm Felix. I just never thought I would react like that. I guess they're more similar than I had thought. Tom nodded. I can understand that. As long as you're feeling better about it now. I can't imagine what it's been like to go through this at your age. My mum's still alive. I don't know what I'll do when she dies. Sabine and Marinette will be there for you. And so will I. 
if you want me to be. The baker smiled. That would be wonderful. He glanced back over at the table and Marinette was laughing at a story Sabine was telling her about her and Xu Ying growing up together in Shanghai. She wasn't paying any attention to them. Tom turned back to Adrian. Don't hurt my daughter. Please take care of her. The model stared at him for a moment, a little astonished, then smiled. Yes, sir. He knew Tom hadn't said it explicitly, but Adrian felt like he was heavily implying that he now had permission to ask Marinette out, and surely he wouldn't give it unless he felt that his daughter would say yes? Once the drinks were ready, they carried everything over to the table and everything tasted even better than it looked. Done with breakfast, they ambled through Chinatown, with plans to head up to St James's Park and Buckingham Palace before lunch. Tom, Sabine and Shu Yin led the way through the busy streets of Leicester Square, the bodyguard behind Adrian and Marinette who were hanging back. Did I do okay with my mandarin? Marinette asked, then bit her lip. You did amazing. I knew you could do it. Although perhaps next time, let's add some connectives between those sentences. Her means and. We can go over it in our next lesson. Next lesson? Marinette asked, a confused but cute pout on her face. Yeah, assuming you wanted to carry on. I really like hanging out with you, and I doubt my father will let me continue if I'm not teaching you Mandarin. Or I guess I could just say we're doing Mandarin and just not do Mandarin, he suggested. Adrian was feeling a little nervous now. After what Tom had said, he really thought Marinette did like him. Did she not want to see him outside of school anymore? He thought she liked spending time with him as much as he did. Thankfully, she smiled. I'd love that. Mandarin or something else. Maybe you could pick a book and we could read it together? I'd like that. Suddenly, the bodyguard shot off, and Adrian and Marinette watched as he peered into the windows of the huge Lego store in Leicester Square, completely focused on the large Lego dolls surrounding the Lego Big Ben replica. He was completely transfixed. Sabine turned around and caught Adrian's eye, then jerked her head, but he just stared at her, confused. What was she? She did it again, more obvious this time, and Adrian finally got the hint. Marinette, he asked. Hmm? Do you want to go for a walk? But your bodyguard... She trailed off with a smile, realising what he was hinting at, even though she hadn't seen her mum's gestures. Let's go. Without another thought, Adrian grabbed Marinette's hand and they ran off, back the way they came, through Chinatown and out onto Charming Crossroad. This way, Marinette said, taking the lead now, and they ran a fair bit down the street to a large bookshop called Foils. It towered above them at five storeys high, red lights picking out the sign on the front and bright lights inside illuminating the thousands of books stored within. I searched it up, she said because you said you like books. I knew it was around here. Adrian gave her a huge smile and then squeezed her hand. Thank you. Come on, let's go in before my bodyguard finds us. Still holding hands, they went inside and headed upstairs. The top floor was a cafe, so they stopped on the fourth floor, browsing through the shelves. It was before 10 in the morning, so it was relatively quiet in the large bookshop, but they could hear the coffee machines on the floor above them whirring and the clink of plates, along with the occasional page turn on this floor, accompanied by the comforting smell of paper. It was peaceful. That was why Adrian liked books. No matter what was going on in his life, they always brought him some sort of solace. Another world for him to escape into for a few hours was sometimes just what he needed. Are we in the languages section? Marinette asked, keeping her voice low, and Adrian smiled when he spotted the Mandarin books. We are. Each language was split into two sections, one half for language learning books, the other for novels written in that language. And from it, Marinette picked up the Mandarin translation of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, then traced her fingers over the golden embossed Chinese characters that made up the title of the book. This is so cool, she said. Not that I can read it. Maybe one day. I do really want to continue with the lesson, she said. Or just spend time with you, she admitted with a blush. Me too, the model said, blushing too. Before it could go any further, Adrian heard a familiar grunt and he immediately grabbed Marinette and pulled her to hide between two bookshelves, only just enough room for both of them to squeeze in, the Mandarin translation of Harry Potter pressed between them. You okay? Adrian asked. Marinette nodded. Why are we hiding? Heard my bodyguard. He risked peeking out and saw him patrolling by the stairs, glancing down each aisle, but wasn't coming down any of them. He'll go soon, Adrian said with a smile. Are you sure we should be doing this? Marinette whispered. I don't want you to get into trouble. The model just shrugged. What are they going to do to me? Make it so you can't see me again? Adrian's face dropped. He just wanted to be a normal teenager. who got to hang out with his friends whenever he wanted without needing a bodyguard. But Marinette was right. He was going to be punished for this, and it might involve her. She saw the worry on his face and she quickly grabbed his hand. Hey, it's okay. We'll just say we got separated from the group and our phones ran out of battery. Just a mistake. We can have fun together today. You've read Harry Potter, right? She asked, trying to distract him. Adrian nodded. So, they changed a lot of the characters' names to fit French for the translation. 
Did you know in English, Voldemort's real name is Tom Marvolo Riddle? He frowned. You mean, he's not actually called Tom Elvis Studisaw? Do you think the whole world could take Lord Voldemort seriously if his middle name was Elvis? They both started laughing, and Adrian peeked out again. Okay, I think he's gone. They shuffled out of the tight space, and once Marinette had put the Harry Potter book back on the shelf, they made their way down to the first floor where the fiction was. Did you want to get something, Marinette asked? Adrian nodded and quickly located the books by authors with the surname beginning with Z, and he took two copies of The Book Thief by Marcus Susak from the shelf. For our reading group, he said, and she smiled. As long as no one else joins, Marinette said. I think that can be arranged. Once he paid for them, they left the bookstore, paper bags swinging between them. Where to next, Marinette asked. Maybe Trafalgar Square, Adrian suggested. And then after, we could go to Liberty. I want to buy you some fabric so you can make a matching scarf. Another blush lit up Marinette's face, and by now, Adrian was just enjoying that he could make her look like that. You don't have to. I know. I want to. Come on. They ambled slowly back through Leicester Square, keeping an eye out for the bodyguard as they walked, but Adrian wasn't too bothered now. Natalie would more than likely buy that he had got lost. He led the conversation, telling Marinette about some of his favourite books as they walked, and their hands kept brushing together as they went. He wanted to grab her hand and intertwine their fingers. They held hands so often now that it felt weird not to be doing it when he was with her. And her dad wasn't here right now, so what would be the harm? Trafalgar Square was much busier than Chinatown had been, with tourists clambering up onto the lines at the foot of Nelson's Column or taking photos of the statues on the four plinths. But both Adrian and Marinette were more fascinated by the two fountains and the aqua blue colour of the water in them. A few children were sat on the ledges, splashing water at each other, and squealing above the chatter of the crowd. It's beautiful, Marinette said as they walked up to one of the fountains, and Adrian agreed, then spotted an ice cream van parked up on the curb. Come on, let's get something to eat. We can sit down with some ice cream. Marinette smiled in agreement and they walked together towards the van, stopping to admire the fountain. I love ice cream, she said. Strawberry's the best. Adrian pulled a face. You're wrong, it's chocolate. We should get Andre to make us some ice cream. See what he thinks. Marinette blushed again. You mean the magic ice cream? He nodded. But the ice cream is for couples, she said, her blush getting worse. Which is why I want to get it with you. He reached between them and took Marinette's hand in his. This was it. This was the moment. No more waiting. He was going to finally tell her how he felt and Adrian. His blood ran cold at the sound of Natalie's voice and the two teenagers looked up to see a very unimpressed Natalie, Shu Yin and bodyguard. Tom and Sabine were stood nearby, thankfully not looking all too bothered. His father's assistant immediately grabbed his wrist and pulled him away from Marinette's and the bodyguard led the way to where a taxi was waiting. Adrian kept twisting his head around and glancing at Marinette and she was still blushing, probably having worked out what he was trying to say to her but there was also a look of worry on her face, which wasn't surprising considering what was happening. He was bundled into the back of the taxi, squashed between the two adults, and once Natalie had given the driver Amelie's address, she took Adrian's phone out of his pocket. Hey, he protested. Don't, Natalie said, and Adrian shrank back, not used to being scolded by her. You're already in enough trouble. Your father is going to speak to you. His eyes widened. That was never a good sign. They spent the whole ride in awkward silence, but all of Adrian's thoughts were on Marinette's. Natalie was still holding his phone, and he could see the screen kept lighting up with notifications. What if she was texting him, or ringing him, wanting to know what he was about to tell her? Natalie certainly picked her moments to interrupt. When they arrived back at Liverpool Street, Adrian was herded into the elevator, and then straight into Felix's room, where propped against his cousin's pillows was Natalie's tablet, Gabriel's unimpressed face filling the screen. You've disappointed me, Adrian, his father said once Adrian stepped into view of the camera. How? I just got separated from the others. I got lost, he said, using Marinette's lie. Do you really expect me to believe you got lost with that girl? The way his father referred to the person he has feelings for made Aronette ball his hands into fists. Marinette. Her name is Marinette. You know her. I thought you liked her. I did. But now... Now you can't stand that I've found someone who makes me happy, Adrian asked, unable to help himself. He never stood up to his father. Ever. But he couldn't stop himself. This weekend had been emotional already, and now this was happening? Everything was coming out. Someone who saw past who my father is and all of the fame and money and liked me for me. Someone who treated me like a normal person. She looks up to you. A lot. And so do I, Adrian shouted, starting to cry now. I needed you the other night, back in Paris, but you couldn't. Too busy. Always too busy. Too busy to comfort your son who is upset about his dead mother, but not too busy to tell him off for wandering off to have some fun with one of his friends. I understand you miss mum too, but I need you, dad. Why aren't you there for me anymore? Gabriel's face had softened at his son's emotional outburst. 
He didn't know Adrian felt that way, but of course, he wouldn't. He hardly spoke to him now. I am... sorry. Adrian sniffed. What? I am sorry. You're right. I miss your mother. Every day. He averted his gaze. But there is no excuse for not being there for you. You still needed me. You will be getting the train back to Paris this evening. Adrian opened his mouth in protest, but Gabriel held up his hand. I am not finished. You will be getting the train back, as tomorrow we will spend the whole day together. If you would like. The model nodded, a little dumbfounded. Where his father was concerned, he always acquiesced. Not wanting to make him angry and risk him restricting the little freedom he had. If he knew getting emotional would have ended with his dad promising to finally spend time with him, he would have done it months ago. I'd like that. A tiny smile found its way onto Gabriel's face. Good. And perhaps we can discuss plans for Shanghai in the summer, including Marinette and her parents. Adrian wiped away his tears and started to smile. He may be missing out on time in London with Marinette, but he would take Shanghai as a compromise. They're invited? Gabriel nodded. Marinette obviously means a lot to you. Natalie has told me about you holding hands with her. Are you dating? We all need to prepare an announcement for our social media. Oh, no, well, I was about to ask her, but then Natalie... His father nodded. I'm sure Marinette will understand. He paused. I really am sorry, Adrian, he said, voice sounding so soft that it was out of character for him. I will try to be better. Thank you, he said with a smile. And then Gabriel ended the call, and Adrian sunk to the floor with a sigh. This was just supposed to be a fun trip to London, and so far, it had been anything but. I am sufficiently impressed. Adrian jumped at the voice, then glared at Felix, who was making his way out from underneath the bed. Why were you under there? I wanted to listen to the call. Then stand outside the room, Adrian shouted. Or, you know, just stand out of view of the camera. You didn't need to go under the bed. I swear to God, is there something in the water in this country? Felix tutted and joined Adrian on the floor. I wouldn't know. I only drink tea. Tea is primarily water, you idiots. His cousin just smirked. Feeling better? Adrian sighed. Yes, actually. You finally stood up to him. I'm proud of you. Although, I do wish you were staying for longer. You're fun to have around. What happened? Adrian told Felix about what Tom had said to him in the bakery, and then what Sabine had done, and then what he had been about to tell Marinette before Natalie showed up. The moment was so perfect, Adrian said with a smile, and it was such a heavy hint that there was no doubt she knew what I was about to say next. And now Natalie's got my phone so I can't speak to her, and I don't know when I'll see her again. Felix hummed. The moment did certainly sound perfect, but I think... You need to stop waiting. She's the one for you. The moment doesn't matter anymore. She knows how you feel. Next time you see her, just ask her. But when? Because of what happened, I might not see her until we go back to school. I don't want to leave her with something so big hanging over her. She gets nervous so easily. Maybe our driver will still have her address. Perhaps I can get her to the train station later. Adrian smiled. Would you? I'll see what I can do. Felix left the room then, and Adrian led down with a sigh. He had to tell Marinette how he felt before he left. But for now, he needed to pack. But first, he needed a hot chocolate and some more of those Jaffa cakes. Adrian was trying to stall as long as possible, first pretending he had forgotten his phone charger so he had to go back to get it, not that it mattered all too much since Natalie still had his phone, and now on the station, acting as if he couldn't decide what snacks he wanted for the train. Felix had left to get Marinette a while ago, but without his phone, Adrian had no idea where his cousin was now. The train was leaving soon, and there was only so much longer he could stall. Have you decided, Natalie asked, coming up to him? They were in a small convenience store inside St Pancras. Nearly. Depends if I'm allowed chocolates. She rose an eyebrow. You're a model. Models get to eat chocolate when they're on holiday. Natalie sighed. Fine, get some chocolate, but don't tell your father. And be quick, the train will be leaving soon. The blonde boy nodded and finally picked something, and once they paid, they made their way out of the shop and started heading for the Star Train Departures Lounge. He kept looking around as they walked, though, trying to spot his cousin, but it was difficult. The station was progressively getting busier, and with it, Adrian was gradually getting more nervous. He had to see Marinette before he left. Adrian! He looked around, and running towards him was Felix, and just behind him was Marinette. His heartbeat started to pick up at the sight of her, and he started running towards her too. He could hear Natalie shouting to him, but he ignored her. This was more important. Adrian watched as Marinette smiled when she saw him, but when they got close, she tripped over her own foot and started to fall, but the blonde reached out and steadied her. You okay, he asked, as he helped her to stand up straight. She nodded, her smile bright. Yeah, thank you. Are you okay, though? Felix told me what happened on the way over. I can't believe you're leaving. I'm so sorry I got you in trouble. 
don't worry, it was worth it. Well, I wish I could stay, but getting to spend that time with you was amazing. My father rang me to tell me off, so I told him off back for not being there for me. Honestly, over the past few months, your dad has been there for me emotionally more than mine has. Marinette sighed and took one of Adrian's hands in hers, giving it a gentle squeeze. I'm sorry, Adrian. It's okay, he's promised to be there for me a lot more. And we're also spending the whole day together tomorrow. And we're going to Shanghai together in the summer. With you and your parents, if you still want to go. She looked shocked. Of course I do. I just can't believe he said yes to it. Adrian smiled. I don't think he had much of a choice. Not now he knows how much you mean to me. Marinette blushed. That's what you've been trying to tell me, wasn't it? What you're about to say in Trafalgar Square. He nodded. I've liked you since that first day at school, under the umbrella. Her blush got worse. Me too. As in liked you, not liked me. I already liked me. Not in that way. I never had a crush on myself. Adrian just started to laugh and gently reached up, curling a few stray strands of hair behind Marinette's ear. You're cute when you get flustered. Thank you. No, thank you. For asking me to teach you Mandarin. I doubt we'd have ever made it here if you hadn't. So, when you get back to Paris, would you like to go on a date? Marinette nodded, doing her best to hold back her squeal. Adrian was asking her out. I'd love to. She couldn't stop herself from hugging him, and he hugged her back tightly. I really have to go, Adrian said, face pressed into her hair, and she nodded as she pulled away, but the two teenagers still held on to each other. I know, don't have too much fun without me. Marinette giggled. I doubt I'll be able to. Can I kiss you before I go, he asked, a light blush colouring up his face. Marinette nodded, blushing too, and her eyes fluttered closed for the brief moment Adrian's lips met hers. They were in public, so neither of them wanted to go too far, but for them, it was a perfect first kiss. Marinette couldn't help but giggle, and then she buried herself back into Adrian's chest. Her heart was pounding, and she could feel his heart beating just as fast as hers. This was really happening. Adrian, we need to go, Marinette heard Natalie say, and she pulled away from him. I'll see you back in Paris, Adrian said, still holding her close. I'm sorry I couldn't stay longer. It's okay. I'll text you, she said, glancing over at Natalie, and with a sigh, she relented and handed Adrian his phone back. I'll text you the whole way back, he said with a grin, and after one last kiss, Adrian finally followed Natalie and his bodyguard through to the departures lounge. Sabine watched the scene on Phil with a smile, including watching her daughter squeal at Felix, who didn't look all too impressed to be left with his cousin's far too happy girlfriend. Why are you smiling, Tom asked. When Felix had shown up at Shu Yin's, he just thought they were going to St Pancras to say goodbye to Adrian. He didn't realise he was going to see Adrian Agresk kiss his daughter. Now he needed to give his eyes a good bleach bath. I'm just happy my plan worked, his wife said, and Tom's eyes nearly bugged out of his skull. Wait, you planned for this to happen? Well, basically, not every step. I didn't plan for Adrian getting sent home early or the power cut the other week, but that was much appreciated. But the general idea was mine. It was obvious Marinette liked him. She never shut up about him, but I know my daughter. She'd never have told him how she felt. I had no choice. I had to intervene. Tom just stared at his wife in disbelief. You had no choice? This wasn't some sort of humanitarian crisis. This is your daughter's love life. You didn't need to do anything. Sabine just rolled her eyes. I knew what I was doing. And it worked, didn't it? Yeah, and now I've had to watch Adrian make out with my daughter. She laughed. Oh, shush, they weren't doing that. They're perfect for each other. And now Marinette can speak some Mandarin. It all worked out for the best. She made her way over to Marinette and Felix, and Tom followed, albeit at a much slower pace. He'd had zero idea about any of this. Who on earth had he married? 